Okay, let's start. Hi everyone. Um, I suppose that many or many people have already seen this presentation, so I will try to go uh, through the slides uh, uh, rather quickly, uh, so that we can have a discussion at the end. Um, so we we started to work at this uh, plan uh, in uh, during the late spring um, because uh, we we realized that it was necessary to uh, improve the way that LibreOffice uh, was uh, uh, released was uh, not just released but described. Uh, and communicated in uh, in the market uh, um, as uh, there are uh, there were and there are some uh, issues around the 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 software and the sustainability of the of the project so the we we start the plan uh, uh, with some uh, uh, key points uh, the first one uh, is uh, that LibreOffice uh, is uh, uh, technically the best uh, free office suite around uh, and uh, uh, that we are uh, also uh, the, the, the one that better supports the uh, open standard format for office documents or ODF uh, which is uh, the only uh, through uh, open standard available in uh, in the market today and uh, we want to improve the positioning of LibreOffice uh, uh, as provided by TDF uh, uh, but also to support uh, uh, the foundation activities and uh, also support uh, the ecosystem companies uh, so the objective of the plan is not only to improve the way that we are marketing LibreOffice, but also the way that we are marketing it in uh, uh, together with uh, uh, ecosystem companies. Uh, some of these companies uh, release products which uh, are not always branded as LibreOffice, uh, but it it's important that they are associated to LibreOffice uh, to um, strengthen them, uh, their brand because we have uh, uh, probably as LibreOffice a better recognition in the market. So associating, for instance, uh, online and uh, mobile products to LibreOffice uh, um, is uh, uh, I think uh, positive uh, for uh, the ecosystem companies that are releasing this product. Um, for instance, we receive uh, several uh, requests uh, on uh, from people looking for mobile uh, and uh, iOS uh, um, version of LibreOffice. Uh, and uh, uh, at the moment, there is nothing uh, that uh, uh, there are LibreOffice based product, but not a product that has the LibreOffice uh, name or uh, is uh, associated to LibreOffice uh, if they search, uh, search for it. Um, some numbers. So uh, looking at Git, uh, developers sponsored by the ecosystem companies provide 68% of all activity and volunteers, 28%. Uh, um, we can uh, uh, probably say that uh, the 68% the of uh, provided by ecosystem companies uh, is also, um, can be identified with the, with the biggest feature which are developed uh, and uh, volunteers uh, activities can be identified with uh, um, activities on the user interface uh, and uh, um, localization, quality assurance, uh, and activities which are uh, instrumental for the quality uh, of LibreOffice, uh, uh, but are uh, in many cases not uh, directly related to 
source code development. Um, based on donation numbers, 90% are from individuals uh, and 10% from uh, uh, small and medium businesses. Maybe there is a 1% from large businesses, but it's uh, not visible uh, uh, at all. And uh, based on estimates, less than 5% of LibreOffice enterprise users contribute in any way to the project. Uh, including buying ca any kind of product or service from ecosystem companies. This uh, is uh, especially bad uh, if we look at the long-term sustainability of uh, the LibreOffice project. So the plan does not touch the following point, uh, which is a change of the document foundation statutes, a change of LibreOffice LGPL uh, MPL copyleft license, a change of features for whatever version of LibreOffice and a new or different or commercial version of LibreOffice from the Document Foundation. So in the slide deck, there is no mention of the above points. Uh, uh, and uh, so this is not uh, for discussion. This is not going to change. Uh, and uh, if people have perceived that a uh, uh, a label associated with LibreOffice would have been uh, uh, a change uh, in this direction. This is ju was just uh, the wrong perception. We have explained it multiple times. Uh, people have continued to uh, push forward their wrong perception. Uh, it's not constructive uh, to discuss uh, on topics that are not uh, under discussion. Um, this some background uh, information so uh, of course uh, since we have launched uh, in 2010 the uh, both the global open source ecosystem uh, and uh, the office suite uh, um, ecosystem have evolved uh, especially in the open source ecosystem there have been discussions uh, about the relationship with business using open source without contributing back to open source project. There are some uh, extremely large business uh, who are doing this. Uh, it is legitimate if you look at the license. Uh, it is not legitimate if you, uh, if you consider uh, that uh, uh, you are using those software strategically and therefore you should uh, support the development of those uh, software. Uh, in uh, in 2014, uh, the art fleet bug was uh, a, a turning point uh, to raise the issue of open source sustainability. And there have been discussions in 2016, Nadia Egbal has published the paper Roads and Bridges, the unseen, unseen labor behind our digital infrastructure, which is more specifically about uh, um, open source software used in uh, large infrastructure uh, deployments and uh, in 2019 Dries Buiter uh, has published a blog post balancing makers and takers to scale and sustain open source uh, which is more focused on uh, development of uh, end user facing uh, facing software uh, if you don't know this, uh, these documents uh, I think uh, they are very interesting uh, uh, because they, the ideas in these documents are uh, supporting uh, the entire discussion that we are having. Uh, these are uh, some excerpts from uh, Dries Buitert. Uh, I think that people that have uh, seen the, 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 the document uh, have already, are already familiar with that. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, we there is uh, um, defines uh, uh, the, the two different positions as makers and takers. Of course, uh, it uh, even in, even Dries is not uh, uh, pleased about the fact that there are uh, uh, many. Uh, a very large number of uh, consumers of uh, his product, which is uh, Drupal, who are not contributing back uh, in any way to the to the to the to the Drupal ecosystem. 
uh, I think this discussion is uh, is very interesting. Of course, it's not the focus of today, but I think uh, that following the discussion can help in understanding better where we are. Um, as a response to the situation, there have been some toxic solution not based on the open source definition. So uh, two of them were um, proposed by the either maker. Uh, she's a lawyer, and they are the common closed license, uh, which was proposed by Redis Labs, and the server side the public license, uh, which was proposed by and it's used by MongoDB. Then there are uh, um examples of uh, uh, licenses uh, that are not respecting the open source uh, definition uh, although their ethical principles uh, are uh, have to be respected like uh, the hippocratic license uh, uh, which is about the ethical use uh, of uh, uh, open source software um i think that uh, there is a there is a, a merit in discussing uh, this kind of uh, evolutions not the evolution uh, where basically you uh, you make the software proprietary uh, by maintaining but tweaking the open source license and then there is a fair source license uh, proposed by the community uh, all these are not really um, uh, open source or free software license. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, there might be interesting evolution in considering some of these license uh, um, for uh, in an uh, for an evolution uh, of the uh, open source definition. But of course, an evolution that doesn't prevent people to use open source software. Otherwise, it's not open source anymore. Uh, the office suite market has changed. Uh, desktop productivity is basically flat. Um, online mobile productivity is growing. Uh, there is a, a growing attention for the topic of digital sovereignty. Uh, which is not related to office suites but is related to document uh, standards and during the next 10 years uh, uh, desktop productivity will probably continue to stay flat uh, might might slightly grow um, based on for instance uh, work from home or remote work uh, uh, as there will be an increased number of uh, personal computers using office suites as we have seen uh, during uh, the, the recent lockdown, uh, but this is not uh, significant in terms of uh, market share percentage, uh, while online and mobile productivity will continue to grow. And uh, digital sovereignty uh, will become pervasive. It's at the moment, uh, I think we have just scratched the surface of the digital sovereignty topic, uh, I see an increasing interest uh, in uh, in this, uh, and I see an evolution, a positive evolution, uh, um, not only in the in Europe, uh, but also in other geographies. Uh, which are the LibreOffice stakeholders, community member? Uh, they have uh, an high personal involvement. The, in uh, they, they're all uh, uh, either completely or partial volunteer uh, to for the project they and they give a high project value uh, so because it's the project they are contributing to uh, and then uh, we have the user uh, they don't have any personal involvement they use the product as a free and they uh, also um, do not consider uh, Office Suite as a, um, as a strategic product because they are a commodity and they've been a commodity for quite a, a long time. This gives more or less uh, the graphic that gives an idea of where uh, uh, the, the, the involvement versus value are uh, in terms of uh, uh, positioning. Uh, so the LibreOffice project uh, as a 
is a large community where uh, there there are two two elements uh, the volunteers and the ecosystem uh, and these uh, are uh, uh, there is a uh, an superimposition of the the two areas uh, quite large uh, uh, and uh, i would say is maybe it's larger than this maybe smaller than this uh, this is just a uh, an accommodation for the for the graphic um let's look at development the last two years these are the companies uh, probably people is already familiar with this um and uh, so volunteers uh, and uh, uh, companies which are outside the ecosystem uh, are uh, uh, contributing uh, for uh, around 28 uh, percent the 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 other percentage is done by companies uh, in uh, in uh, who belong to the ecosystem and uh, several of them are also members of the of the advisory board of document foundation advisory board uh, these are all contribution is not just code these are based on the dashboard so uh, contribution is uh, are all uh, that that are possible to 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 parse um, i think that uh, quite a, a chunk of localizations are missing uh because we uh, only commits to the to the source code are uh, considered while uh, there are many people who are localizing uh, uh, but are not committing the changes uh, as the changes are committed uh, by one or two people in the in their community for instance if i look at italy there is a group of uh, probably around 15 people working at localization and just one person committing uh, because this is a decision of the group. Uh, um, the, the leader, Walter Mura, is committing uh, all the changes from uh, all the other people. So there is a number of people, uh, uh, of core contributors, uh, that are uh, providing almost 80% of uh, the, the, com the, the activity uh, as I said, the activity is not 100%, but are, we are working to to close the gap and uh, and have this uh, contribution contribution uh, chart uh, to be um, as close as the reality as possible. Then there is uh, around 25% of regular contributors. So regular is uh, uh, on a weekly basis, so they they are very close to be uh, core. And there is uh, then a large number of uh, casual, con uh, a small, uh, a larger number of casual contributors that are from a monthly to um, really um, every now and then contributions. They are uh, uh, contributing only five percent. Uh, in some cases, this is uh, this five percent can be extremely important because in some cases, for instance. Some security patches are done by people highly specialized, but not contributing on uh, on a regular basis. So uh, this kind of uh, graph uh, of charts has to be interpreted with some uh, using some common sense because uh, it's not a representation uh, uh, of the uh, a perfect representation of the situation. Uh, it, as I said, we are trying to improve it, uh, uh, but there are some uh, things that are not represented here and are still very important. So these are uh, uh, comments on uh, on that. Uh, of course, a consequence of all this uh, is that without contribution from the ecosystem, uh, LibreOffice uh, would not keep up with user expectation of course uh, contribution from the community are extremely important but this is to say that uh, uh, it is important to have uh, contribution also from commercial companies to the source code of uh, libreoffice uh, and uh, also because uh, uh, enterprises uh, ecosystem companies that are selling uh, 
and LibreOffice Enterprise product are paying, in fact, uh, uh, the majority of uh, the development. So the development is uh, um, because they they can pay developers. It's not that they are paying uh, uh, for any other reason. That the fact that they're selling a product gives them money to pay the developers. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, it's very important also the percentage uh, of development uh, pro uh, provided by volunteers, uh, um, which uh, is not easy to, to calculate in terms of uh, value, economic value, because uh, uh, this is free time of people. So uh, the, the, the economic value can be extremely high in some cases, especially for people that have uh, families and other activities and they are donating to LibreOffice uh, a valuable part of their free time. Uh, this uh, is more or less the evolution of LibreOffice ecosystem. So between 2010 and 2014, uh, there was a growth of ecosystem companies, probably also based on the uh, enthusiasm after the announcement uh, and the fact that at the moment LibreOffice uh, uh, and no com almost no competitors in the in in that um, in that field, and there were from 20 to 60 full-time paid developers. Uh, so, in, while from 2014 and 2017, uh, um, some ecosystem companies left, uh, and the number of full-time paid developers has decreased. Uh, and uh, from 2017 to 2020, that the number of ecosystem companies is more or less stable. Maybe the, the number of full-time paid developers has decreased a little bit, uh, but not as much as it has decreased from 2014 to, to 2017. Where are we today? Uh, the community is growing. Uh, we are uh, reaching more and more uh, uh, countries, more and more uh, native language community. The ecosystem is not growing as much as the community. Uh, it's probably not as easy uh, as to grow the community, to grow the ecosystem, but it's something that uh, uh, we should work more uh, at. Uh, the relationship between the ecosystem and the community are not ideal, uh, and uh, this uh, um, should be solved uh, in some ways. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, 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 the ideal way would be to, to sit around the table and uh, in, in, a, in a rather large group and uh, discuss openly about the issues, uh, but this at the moment is not possible. But it, even if it's not possible, we should find a way of uh, uh, educating more uh, uh, both sides about uh, the respective uh, uh, expectation. Uh, one of the issues is that uh, all the new members in the community or most of the new members in the community are not aware uh, of the rules of the project. Uh, and. Uh, uh, they they may provide uh, enthusiastic contribution, but in some cases they also can create frictions. Uh, it's not their fault. Uh, the fault is probably that we should mentor, or we should devote more time to mentoring people that is new in the community and explain uh, what we expect uh, from community members and what we expect from ecosystem members. And. Uh, uh, so the, the, we, we have to, to develop a new strategy for the next decade to support the growth of the project. I think uh, there is now the, a project uh, uh, going on uh, and we should have uh, some uh, new uh, announcement in this area in, during the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, the, the unique selling proposition of LibreOffice is the best office, uh, free office suite ever, uh, backed by the, a strong community and a strong ecosystem. We provide uh, the standard document format for interoperability and digital sovereignty, uh, although this is not uh, understood in the market. Uh, 
On the other hand, I see more and more question rising from the market uh, about uh, uh, the um, the opportunity of uh, continuing to deploy and use uh, the Microsoft Office form. Uh, we provide the best of open source. Uh, we provide professional support uh, uh, for uh, organization using office productivity for production. So uh, although this uh, also is not extremely uh, well understood uh, by the market. So we have a couple of uh, points where we should uh, and we have to improve uh, our communication to the external world. Uh, office suites are mature products, so they uh, uh, they are a commodity. Uh, they will not decline uh, as long as PC exists, uh, but they uh, will uh, be increasingly considered a, a commodity and therefore a, a collateral product. Uh, we have to uh, identify LibreOffice versions. Uh, um, as I said before, there are, there are companies that are releasing products based on LibreOffice, but not carrying the LibreOffice name. So uh, we have created, we have already started to use an ingre a so-called ingredient brand, uh, LibreOffice technology. We started with the LibreOffice 7 uh, uh, announcement, uh, and uh, we uh, will uh, uh, move the focus of announcement uh, uh, from uh, specifically to the, the Document Foundation, although we we won't uh, uh, we won't uh, uh, forget that we are all part of the Document Foundation. Um, also because uh, there is a misunderstanding in some cases and uh, the document foundation is seen as a software vendor so we will try to defocus a little bit from uh, tdf announcement and uh, use more uh, uh, the libreoffice project announces by saying that the libreoffice project of course is uh, part of the document foundation uh, the LibreOffice technology ingredient brand is similar to the concept of Intel Inside. Uh, we cannot use, of course, uh, LibreOffice Inside because uh, uh, Intel has patented the association of Inside to a brand name. But this can, uh, using this ingredient brand, can help TDF promote commercial products because we just by saying that we promote that we promote uh, the LibreOffice technology. Uh, we are uh, supporting a commercial product uh, and uh, uh, by using that name uh, we uh, we don't have the risk of being accused of supporting uh, for profit activities uh, we have also to di differentiate uh, uh, the product so uh, the product will uh, use a, a label uh, the label is not product name uh, so we are not going to change uh, the libreoffice product name but we will associate a label uh, we so far we have used the informal uh, vanilla label for uh, to to uh, distinguish the the libreoffice uh, released by the document foundation from uh, libreoffice released by others including uh, uh, linux distributions um, we we will uh, uh, this uh, is something that it's still open for decision so we we are uh, there is a discussion going on uh, and uh, the discussion uh, as a deadline uh, on november 15 uh, uh, and uh, if necessary there will be a vote by tdf members about uh, the best choice for this lab label uh, we will also clarify that this version of libreoffice is supported by volunteers and is suggested for use by individuals small organizations and non-profit ngos uh, of course uh, this will not prevent uh, this version being used by enterprises uh, but 
we will have to use some uh, moral suasion to avoid that uh, enterprises uh, uh, do not uh, uh, ignore completely the need of supporting uh, the ecosystem uh, by uh, by using a, a professionally supported version of LibreOffice. And uh, there, the LibreOffice Enterprise is also a label uh, for ecosystem members, uh, and uh, this will be the tag will be that it's professionally supported and suggested for production environments in enterprises and large organizations. Of course, uh, this alone doesn't guarantee that uh, all enterprises and large organizations will switch to this, uh, but we have to educate them uh, and uh, uh, convince them uh, that they have to look at this. Uh, at the ecosystem for their uh, for their needs. Um, from my experience, uh, um, uh, the the uh, two or three uh, larger large um, migrations that I've uh, contributed to in Italy have uh, always ended up uh, in uh, uh, in having a contract with one of the ecosystem companies because uh, we insisted with them uh, and we insisted in some cases for months uh, we always remember to to these companies that they had to to buy something or to 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 at least uh, to to talk to enterprise ecosystem companies to find a solution for their needs uh, the solution as in some cases uh, for instance, for the Italian Ministry of uh, uh, Defense, uh, uh, they have chosen to have uh, as, uh, the, the enterprise uh, solution for uh, a percentage of their users, uh, those who are using uh, LibreOffice on a daily basis uh, and uh, still use the, the free version for uh, uh, another percentage, but at least uh, they are investing money in the LibreOffice ecosystem. And uh, we have to provide a consistent message to that. Uh, uh, these are some examples, of course. Uh, uh, this is also open for discussion and uh, for suggestions by, uh, by the uh, ecosystem members, individual members or uh, companies. Um, uh, we we will uh, uh, once we have decided the name we will improve the download page and we will create a LibreOffice community section on the website. Um, we we have a lot of community uh, developed support resources uh, uh, but they and they have to be uh, more uh, popular than uh, they are today. Um, Many people have, have suggested to use the community lab, uh, label. Uh, community edition is just a, a, a buzzword. Uh, is not uh, is not uh, absolutely decided that it's going to be called community edition or uh, uh, X edition. Uh, edition was uh, uh, was a term used during uh, the the discussion. Uh, in many cases, uh, the community edition is the um, feature limited version of open core projects. So I see a risk on uh, using community uh, as a label uh, because LibreOffice is a full feature version. So we should avoid using uh, a name uh, which, uh, especially amongst the users, not in the in the open source community, but uh, amongst users of the product. And uh, we should always remember that LibreOffice is the open source project, probably with the largest uh, number of users um, around, uh, uh, or one of the uh, open source project with the largest number of users around, uh, and uh, which in many cases is not comparable in terms of numbers with the 
the number of uh, uh, real users uh, of users of uh, ma the majority of open source project uh, of course there is a there is a brand iceberg and uh, the the the, the different relationship we have with the brand uh, gives us a different uh, perception of the 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 code uh, the 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 name that we should use uh, uh, but we should remember that this uh, is a name or a label that will uh, help users in understanding uh, which kind of version of LibreOffice they have to deploy is not something that has to please community members it has to improve the positioning of LibreOffice in the market which are two different objectives uh, for LibreOffice Enterprise uh, this uh, uh, they they will probably uh, we have already registered some of this uh, um, they are not active yet uh, but we are ready to have uh, uh, a specific uh, website uh, where uh, we can uh, promote all LibreOffice business uh, related uh, related problem products uh, we have a LibreOffice enterprise ecosystem LinkedIn page um, all project members uh, are encouraged to become members of this page. Uh, uh, this page is something where uh, we uh, would like to see announcement of all uh, the uh, ecosystem uh, members. So starting from TDF uh, to, to ecosystem companies, to developers of extensions, to uh, people that is writing uh, manuals, uh, uh or uh, guides uh, or uh, i don't know what uh, documents to help uh, people use libreoffice it's a page uh, to show that the ecosystem is dynamic uh, and moving fast uh of course the uh, libreoffice the ecosystem members should work uh, uh to to uh, with the with the tdf uh, to to make the best use of the libreoffice ecosystem uh, label and uh, this of course uh, uh, is not something that we can influence as tdf uh, but we we are absolutely um, positive in working together with the companies uh, to provide a, a solution to the current situation an improvement of the current situation okay this is already clear uh, and as an example uh, um, we can uh, the product announcement can be x office is a product of the libreoffice enterprise family or something like that um, in this way we we would associate the the, the brand names of uh, ecosystem companies and the libreoffice brand uh, with a mutual advantage um LibreOffice online uh, we is a challenge we we know that there have been evolution uh, recently uh i think that uh, we still have to find uh, a win win solution and uh, what as the current situation is not a win win solution for uh, uh, anyone so uh let's try to find uh, a win-win solution uh, which is uh, good for uh, everyone uh, and of course uh, the naming uh, should be similar uh, to the uh, to the what is proposed for the desktop version to to have consistency as well uh, and uh, these are, uh, of course, this, the same slide as before. These are examples. Um, LibreOffice Mobile. Uh, we uh, there are uh, version of LibreOffice Mobile that are uh, all versions basically uh, are not using the LibreOffice name. And I think uh, that this is a pity. Uh, we should have a way of having uh, uh, these products uh, being recognized to be. Uh, LibreOffice mobile versions 
uh, because uh, we, we receive uh, quite a large number of inquiries and uh, therefore uh, uh, being able to make it clear that um, when, the, when people are uh, looking, for instance, at app stores for uh, mobile applications, they, uh, if we use the, 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 the LibreOffice uh, technology tag somewhere, it will be easier to find this product uh, and it will be easier for users that want to deploy LibreOffice on mobile uh, to adopt on, on one of these products. And this again is an example of what could be used. Um, to support all this, uh, we should uh, develop testimonials and case studies. Uh, we have never worked so far uh, with, uh, with ecosystem companies in, on this, uh, but I think uh, that uh, uh, once we have the appropriate uh, um, areas where uh, we can publish this, uh, these stories, uh, we should work with them and we should also work with JoinUp uh, to have these testimonials uh, um, used and linked uh, on the European Union uh, uh, open source uh, resource database because uh, this uh, would give uh, visibility and uh, would uh, especially at uh, uh, political level in uh, in the European Union. Um, last thing, uh, uh, we have uh, seen that work from home is uh, a positive, has been a positive thing for uh, uh, LibreOffice. Uh, this uh, there is a general uh, consensus on the fact that the number of people working from home uh, uh, will increase over the next few years. The pandemic has been an accelerator uh, and has uh, demonstrated to many companies that were uh, not confident on this model uh, that this is a sustainable model uh, uh, for many businesses. So. Uh, as the impact uh, uh, of having work from home uh, is a positive impact on, uh, uh, on the fixed expenses of uh, large companies, uh, there will be uh, an uptake of work from home uh, in general, uh, and uh, also school will implement something uh, which is similar from uh, work from home uh, in a in a in some way um, just to support uh, the, uh, the 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 concept of work from home uh, um, the number of low uh, specs pc sold uh, during the, the the lockdown has increased in a huge way in italy we are working with a a, a small uh, uh, italian uh, PC company, uh, Microtech, uh, they, are, uh, they, mm, they are installing LibreOffice on all their, uh, their machines, including Windows machine. And uh, just before, probably they were lucky because just before the lockdown, they announced uh, a 199 euro um, laptop uh, Windows laptop, uh, 199 is uh, end user price. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks to that uh, laptop, uh, during the, the, the following six months, which means uh, from March to September, their uh, uh, increase in the market uh, has been uh, over 1000%. Uh, they they were they probably they were nowhere in the in the in the list of uh, Italian PC manufacturer and now they are number ten and uh, they've sold uh, um, something like uh, sixty thousand of these uh, low spec PCs uh, uh, while their record for uh, on on for previous years was to sell. Uh, 12,000 PCs in 12 months. So 
this is a proof that work from home uh, is a positive uh, uh, trend uh, and we can leverage because uh, of course uh, LibreOffice uh, can find a place in on that. So we, I think uh, we, we can uh, launch a work from home campaign, uh, maybe immediately after the announcement of 7.1, uh, which is combining uh, the effort of uh, TDF uh, and ecosystem companies to have uh, uh, results that are uh, positive for everyone. Uh, businesses are planning a similar campaign. So why we should ignore the opportunity? Of course, uh, might not be easy to, to, um, to develop such a campaign, but I think uh, we can have uh, very good results. Um, so the timeline for this, uh, uh, we will announce and the finalized uh, strategy in January 2021. We have already started to implement non-controversial elements like LibreOffice technology. And uh, we will also work uh, with the certification uh, group uh, to improve the, mar the, the certification marketing strategy and uh, we will uh, uh, announce the new strategy in the upcoming months. Uh, and uh, I think uh, as this uh, uh, plan, uh, as, uh, which uh, was, uh, was born to, to solve a specific pro objective, uh, um, has uh, demonstrated that there is a lot of interest around the marketing uh, and uh, the future of LibreOffice. I think that this uh, should be should become uh, an ongoing effort. Uh, we can. Uh, I personally would like to start working uh, more closely with developers uh, to see if there are features that uh are requested by end users and could be developed within the scope of the document foundation for instance distance learning uh, uh, needs a, a better or improved presentation module so further development of impress uh, are absolutely within tdf scope mission statutes or whatever you want and I think that only by having uh, uh, development and marketing working together, which doesn't mean that developers have to do what marketing is telling them, but is that we have to listen to each other, which is something that we have not done uh, very well during the last 10 years. We can define a plan for the evolution of LibreOffice, which is uh, better for anyone and is a plus for the, for the project. So I finished. Thank you. Uh, there are uh, uh, there is time for discussion, questions, and uh, I hope uh, everything was clear. And uh, uh, my my uh, talk was uh, was rather clear. And I will shut up now. but I don't hear anyone raising hands. So I imagine people are uh, going through the slides and let everything settle down a bit. And um, uh, just maybe to, to emphasize again that the discussion about that is taking place on the public marketing list. There's concrete timelines, so all the documents, all the discussion is taking place in private, uh, in, in, not in private, in public, of course, and um, that you can uh, take part in that. So if you want to read through some of the slides, if you want to read through some of the documents that is all available, I think it's quite a lot of uh, information you need to process and parse. So feel free to participate in the public discussion.
just uh, as I would add a, a last uh, uh, remark from myself, uh, uh, at the moment I'm not uh, um, participating to the discussion on the marketing list, uh, uh, but this is on purpose uh, because I would like uh, to, I think I've, I've already written and, and talked uh, too much in this, uh, so I want to see all the others uh, what are saying. Uh, and uh, so I gave myself uh, a kind of veto to, to, to discuss unless uh, someone asks a specific question until the end of October. Then uh, I have 15 days where I will become an active uh, part of the discussion. Uh, of course, I, I can agree or disagree with, with, with positions, but I, uh, I think that only by working together uh, we can uh, uh, find a solution which is positive for everyone. And I think uh, uh, that we can uh, really find uh, something that is uh, um, answering uh, all uh, the, the needs. Uh, um, and uh, as usual, uh, I think that if uh, I could uh, see 80% of what I desire being satisfied, I would be extremely happy. I know that I have to give up 20% because uh, otherwise we will never, uh, or at least 20%, otherwise uh, we will never get along uh, on a common path. Yeah, Christine. Oh. Uh, hi, Italo. Um, hi. Good job. Thank you for your speech. Um, I just had a question about um, if if you'd had any discussions with any of the ecosystem companies about LibreOffice's uh, expectations on contributions, and um, and if so, how those discussions went. Uh, we, we basically the ecosystem companies are part of the community, so we have uh, ongoing discussions with them. Um, of course, uh, uh, the discussion happen at different levels. Uh, so, on uh, between individuals or between uh, organizations, uh, uh, but I think uh, that what we should aim at, uh, and I'm. Uh, confident because the 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 interest that has re been raised and you, i mean just by the fact that 32 people are listening to this talk is a uh, confirms that there is interest uh, uh the interest that has been raised by this open discussion on marketing that we never had before i think that confirms that there is uh, uh there is a lot of ground to go uh, for uh, the uh, the project uh, in terms of marketing uh, to help uh, uh, each other and with each other I say to help ecosystem companies with commercial objective and uh, uh, ecosystem members with volunteers objectives uh, to reach uh, a a consensus on uh, on something that uh, will allow both parts to to create and develop and sustain uh, a better product so i think uh, it's a uh, it's a challenge is not might be not completely easy but i think uh, uh, we have to 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 accept the challenge and uh, and start uh, working together a lot better than we did in the past Great, thanks. Any other question? I mean, uh, no disagreement on any disagreement on what I said, uh, I'm amazed.
I mean, there's still like a, a month to go for discussions and no, uh, sure, let's, but let's give people the time. But I think there's there's no no definite outcome done yet. We we presented the status quo, and you you saw there are quite some discussions happening. Also, for example, in the last board call and, and on other venues, and as such, um, I think it it needs some time to to settle the go through, especially during a, a really packed conference week. So um, I, I take this as a summary of where we stand, of the ideas, of the, the problems we try to address, and then let's take that forward uh, also on the list. Yeah, sure. Of course, the, the, the slides will be available uh, after the conference. Uh, in uh, we, we will publish them on, I think, somewhere. I. Uh, still, I don't know where, but I we will uh, make it clear where people will be able to access the slides. Um, Italo, sure. What's the plan about um, repo office online? As I said, uh, uh, I, I mean I, I don't have plans. I think uh, we should discuss uh, to to have a plan. Because at the moment we don't have a plan, uh, we are uh, um, we are taking decisions uh, uh, which are not part of a plan. Of course, uh, they are part of a plan, but not of a common plan. They are part of a of a plan by one of the components of the the entire picture. Uh, so I think that about online uh, we are missing uh, the. Uh, a common plan and uh, I don't know what can be the outcome of a common plan uh, because if I provide my ideas that would be my ideas and uh, and and of course I would like to avoid that at the moment uh, I think that everyone uh, has ideas uh, and uh, uh, so let's discuss this uh, I think we have to find uh, a solution uh, which is uh, better than the current uh, situation and is better than the previous situation because both the current and the previous situation are uh, not optimal ones as i said uh, i don't think that the current situation is a win win uh, situation as it as the previous situation was not a win win situation and uh, therefore uh, uh, i think that uh, I can make my, I can put my ideas on the plate, but I would like to see other people. Otherwise, it's not a discussion; it's a solo uh, talk. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm was somehow surprised that um, in the first lockdown there was no initiative to get online more prominent um, to schools and um, organizations uh, and so most of these organizations picked up teams office office 365 whatever and uh, of course zoom and um, we were not able to gain any uh, market share so I think that's possibly a mistake. I think we did grow in market share a fair bit as LibreOffice Online derivatives. Um, but oh, well, I don't know about market share. We, we grew in, in terms of a number of seats and Nextcloud and Lincloud and Moodle and various other companies were driving uh, a LibreOffice Online based solution left and right. Uh, so, so, you know, I think, I think that's, that's clear. Um, the good thing is that that resulted in, in not just more users, but more funding to improve the software. And I think it's very important that we don't focus on growing our user base at the cost of funding any work on it. Um, Perhaps in addition from my side, Lothar speaking here. Um, Dennis, perhaps you have uh, observed uh, that there were since uh, February, March, when the lockdown came in, um, there were also discussions on these issues, um, which uh, lead us, let us lead us to the marketing activity plans. So, um, 
as you as you have observed that there were such uh, d uh, discussions for coming with such an, an marco plan and um, we want to have a holistic plan for it uh, within these uh, LibreOffice online uh, decisions or, or um, uh, um, uh, packages and, and so on. So, and then uh, discussing this and now with, uh, with decisions from, from parts of the community, we are at a, at a new uh, point of this discussion. So we need some more time to discuss this. And everybody is uh, is uh, is uh, part of this discussion and should uh, bring in uh, ideas. But I I advise not to to do something hectical, um, do not the same thoughts as others do, and um, think about uh, moves and think about decisions um, and take all in this discussion in. And no blackmailing. No. Uh, argumenting in the sense of um, if you do that, I will do that. This will be not good. And I'd love to continue the discussion, but I have a talk on the history of prehistory, uh, prehistory of LibreOffice, uh, just right now. So I shall head into that. But thanks, Tolly. Uh, good presentation. Okay. Sorry, uh, because this was. This was just a guy I want to ask something. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm, I'm really pleased to, to see uh, the idea of a user-centric marketing dripping in the argumentation of the new market, Markham plan. Um, but uh, what, what I presumed all the time was, and looking at the numbers, you have in the plan. Uh, Calabora is doing most of the code commitment at all. So uh, maybe this is wrong, but those code commitments Calabora does and those developments and code developments Calabora does, it wasn't just uh, they, they decide not by themselves what they do, but I think the most of the code decisions are made by customers who just come along and say, hey, here's a bug and, and you have, we have a service agreement and uh, go on and fix it. Or we like to have this new function and we will pay you about X euros or dollars for that to implement it. And I, I always had, had the picture that most, not all of course, but most of the development and most of the code uh, Collabora brings into the project uh, comes out of those activities. And so you could say most of the code comes out of user-centric needs because user the users obviously need that so much they pay Collabora to do it. So maybe this is this is just a short circuit or a short source, but uh, I, this, this is always construction I had in my head for that. And by this, this is also also an idea which I missed totally in, in all this discussion. Uh, they get money from their customers to do that much coding. This is what they are paid for. And this is the business model of Collabora, of course. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, let's say, I, I draw a little bit back on the argumentation. They do so much uh, for, for, the, for the code base. They have to be respected more or they have to have more, uh, more things. I'm, I'm not sure this, this, is, this is an aspect I, I miss in the discussion a little bit. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just don't know. And this is because I, I would have loved to have Mike here. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think if the idea is, is, is uh, clear, I had, but I'm, I'm stopping now and maybe someone has to uh, say. Uwe, uh, I agree with you on, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, companies like Collabora, they, they are paid by customers. 
but of course, uh, um, but we have a, a larger end user base uh, than just collabora customers. And for instance, as I said, uh, uh, improving impress doesn't seem to be uh, the objective of um, um, many paying customers of Collabora. And there might be a reason um, because uh, uh, presentations are uh, uh, probably a um, niche uh, application. And uh, so there, there is a lower request, uh, while uh, uh, Impress needs uh, probably some love. And uh, uh, maybe uh, we could uh, either uh, uh, present a plan of uh, user center feature and uh, ask company if they are willing to put some money on, on that or uh, uh, see if uh, this uh, user centric or requested feature are uh, in line with TDF uh, mission. And if we talk about education, Impress uh, is definitely something that is used for distance learning. So if we want to make a better LibreOffice for distance learning, we can probably invest uh, money, TDF money on, on on this topic, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, let's be uh, open in uh, in the discussion. Uh, I it, the fact that we have never uh, uh, had a a user based marketing uh, is because we 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 were organized in a, in a different way. But I if uh, after ten years we realize that this organization uh, has also created some issue uh, so maybe let's uh, change slightly this organization uh, give some space to uh, end user um, based marketing uh, at least in term of discussions and then we'll see what happens uh, maybe we fail completely or maybe we are successful i don't know but let's try but, uh... But what I see is at the moment the discussion shifting from uh, not growing the user base by features the users like to have, but growing the community. And uh, this implies, of course, uh, at least at some amount, ignoring the, those users we are, which are in 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 of your presentation just take it and uh, and uh, putting the focus on makers and this is this is a totally other direction to move so this is also a discussion we have to have yeah but if we don't have users uh, then uh, we will not have a community over the long term hmm. <laughs> If we, have, if we have half the users we have now, we would have also the same community. Probably, yes. So this is a, this is a re relatively robust model, let's say. <laughs> yes, but uh, if uh, we increase the number of users, uh, and uh, uh, I don't see any, any reason why we should in not increase uh, the number of users, um, then maybe we can we can become stronger in terms of community as well. I don't know. I mean, we we have ten years of history behind our shoulders, and we have been rather you know blocked on on a model. I think it's time to review the model, and it's time to start discussing on many point of view, including the fact that uh, developers are developing features, but sometimes they may not have uh, the, 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 good, the, the right vision about the future of the product and developing feature by opportunity, which means I develop only the feature that I'm paid for is maybe is not the best solution.
Okay. I think I have to leave to look at the other stuff. Otherwise, my recording that I don't know if it works, but will crash. Maybe not even gently. Thank you for listening, everyone. And uh, see you as soon as possible, really. Apart from Emiliano that I can see here close to Milano, uh, but all the others are more difficult. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.